Hey everybody, Sage of Six Paths here bringing you another tutorial on the Wrath of the Machine Raid on Heroic Mode. More specifically, I'll be talking about the Siege Engine. Between the normal and Heroic version of this raid, I'd say the difference is that Heroic now has a walker at the end of this mission right before you get the parts onto the engine and I think you have more time as well than the normal version. Let's begin with the subclass setup. As a hunter you should be running Night Stalker to tether a bunch of adds. As a titan, you should run defender to protect your teammates from dying. Lastly, as a warlock, you can choose between self-res or stormcaller for ad control. If I were a warlock, I'd go self-res as long as the rest of my teammates have something for ad control. If ad control is a little off, then I'd go stormcaller. Weapon setup. Have a sniper ready for the turrets and walker and have a machine gun, rocket launcher, or exotic sword for adds. My weapon of choice is Dark Drinker. Okay, so here's the objective. You and your fire team must invade the siege engine and retrieve the parts from a skip and bring it back to the engine in order to repair it so that you and your fire team can proceed to the next mission. Here's how it all starts. The siege engine will start to make its way towards you and your teammates. At this point, it would be essential to have at least 3 snipers and 3 ad control guys. A bubble should be popped to protect teammates and possibly a tether or storm caller for ad control. The snipers will snipe the turrets off the left and right side of the engine space and lastly the inner face when its inner core is exposed. Once you have destroyed the three components, the left side of the engine will break off its metal sheeting, allowing you and your fire team to invade it. Now you wait for the engine to break down the wall. At this point, you are now on a timer. Once the wall is trampled down, you and your fire team must hustle down to get to the end of the other wall, but just before you do, there will be a fallen skiff getting ready to drop its allies and also try to take you out. A good practice is to wait behind these cargo boxes and just shoot off its turrets and adds as they come. There will be a captain waiting as well, so just take him out using galley, swords, shotguns, etc. Once the captain is dead, three engine parts will drop. Now there are a lot of people out there who go differently about this. You can either travel the parts on the right side on top, or what I usually like to do is have the team travel the parts downstairs to the left where there is more cover, but there are more fallen mines down there than there are up top. So just have one person take care of the mines by shooting them because if you don't, they will slow you down and the skip will kill you more easily. Now because you are timed, you don't have to rush nilly willy with the parts. Take cover and stay alive from the skips. I cannot stress that enough because they can kill you so fast, it's crazy. It's more better to have the entire fire team alive than it is to rush these parts. Now this is where a vanished smoke grenade and defender bubble can help tremendously. I like to vanish my part carriers as soon as they first pick up the parts so that the skiff won't see them. Next a bubble should be popped down in the middle, close to where a ledge is sticking right under the skips. This will protect your team. Once the skips are out of sight, as will begin to drop down and bother you. This is where shotguns, heavy, and swords come into play as well as supers. As you continue to advance the parts closer to the engine, the last fallen skip will drop a walker. This walker is also dangerous because it can also kill you in one hit. Just communicate to your team to take cover and completely kill the walker. Start sniping and shooting his critical spots which are his legs. Once he is stunned, you now have the advantage to do massive damage in his neck where its inner core is exposed. Don't worry, you will have some time to kill the walker. Just take cover and shoot. Now as your teammates are focusing on the walker, there should be at least one dedicated teammate making his or her way back on the engine to slay Mexus the Siege Engineer. It is important to kill him because his death activates the engine's ramp to be lowered so that you and your fire team can carry the parts onwards. Again, try your best to kill the walker completely and then carry the parts because you won't have to worry about anything else once that walker is dead. Now let's talk about where the parts go. Once you have arrived onto the engine with the parts, you must place each one in its correct position. The first part that usually goes in first is the drive shaft, which is colored blue and oddly shaped. It's the easiest one because as soon as you get on the engine, the drive shaft placement is literally in front of you to your right. The warhead, which is yellow and cone shaped, goes in the middle lane, and finally the engine, which is green and shaped like a rectangle, goes in the far back left lane. Once you've placed these parts in this correct position, you're done with the siege engine and may continue on to the final phases of the raid. I hope this tutorial helped you guys a lot. If you had any raid suggestions on how to go about this or any other comments, just comment down below. 
I'd love to hear all of your opinions. Have a blessed day.